The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Allow me to describe a common scenario. You're trying to make cheese stuffed tortillas, but you've misplaced your cheese grater and a hammer isn't working. Then you discover that your favorite brand is coming out with a new device with a starting price of just $6,000. By the looks of it, it will grate cheese perfectly. Then suddenly, while doing internet research, you find that the contraption doesn't grate cheese at all. Have you ever done this? I certainly did. But that won't stop me from fulfilling my dreams. I will build a Mac Pro that actually does great cheese. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Clem, and today we are fulfilling a lifelong dream. Since the Power Mac G5, Apple's workstation line of computers was frequently called a cheese grater because it looked like a cheese grater, but they never actually did properly grate cheese. So today we are doing what Apple could not do. We are building a real Power Mac that actually grates cheese. And we start with a Power Mac G5 from, I think, 2001. This one has, like many of these, a faulty power supply and also a motherboard issue. So they were known to be not that good. They patched it up with later revisions, but the case was an instant classic because of the cheese grater look. And they kept that for a few years, even into the Mac Pro line. So a Power Mac is based on an IBM PowerPC chip as the main processor and the Mac Pro line is based on Intel Xeon CPUs. So there's a real architecture difference. So this was like the latest uh, Apple workstation things that were really different physically than from a normal PC. And after that with the Mac Pro line they were basically PCs made by Apple but there were no really electronic differences in them. But this one really is different. Let's start by tearing it down and then we will see how we fit in a cheese grater. And of course I want to use the CD slot as an insert for the cheese. So you put your cheese in here and then it will grate the cheese, hopefully. There are a lot of interesting design choices about this case that were made. A lot of parts are user removable without the need of any tools, so you can just pull out the HDD for example, but there are also parts in there that are not replaceable at all. You need to cut open the case to get them out. There's this fan at the top of the case that is not replaceable at all without destroying the case. So I googled for that issue and it turns out the manufacturer tells you to just buy a new case. A feature that I want to preserve at any cost is the latching mechanism for the side panel. It has a little lever on the back. If you pull that, the panel comes off beautifully. And if you want to put it back, you just push the lever in and it's locked in place. That's a really great design and I want to keep that no matter what. For this project, I will use, of course, the brand new Raspberry Pi 4. This should be a usable desktop computer in the end, and the Raspberry Pi will also control the cheese shredding mechanism inside. So this is actually a substantial upgrade for this computer. The Raspberry Pi 4 has about four times the computational power and twice two tries the RAM, depending on your configuration. I have the four gigabyte model here, and the original computer had uh, one and a quarter gigabytes. So that should be quite snappy. And it also uses less than uh, one hundredth of the power. One hundredth, less than one hundredth. It's a very difficult word for me, <laughs> sorry. As you have noticed on this channel, I use a lot of stepper motors in my projects. And this time it's the same. Of course, I will use stepper motors to drive the shredding mechanism. To quickly develop a project that has moving components, I've made a substantial upgrade to my arsenal. I have made my own motion control dev kit. It's called Maya Moves, and it allows you to quickly prototype 
projects that have moving components that use stepper motors, DC motors, servos, or anything that needs external power and needs a signal from a microcontroller or a computer. So this plugs directly into a Raspberry Pi and it allows you to quickly prototype any project that has motion and you can use a wide variety of stepper drivers with it. So every time we make a video, you can download the files like the CAD files and PCB designs and the code. But this time you can actually with one click order a complete kit of this dev kit. So you can also make your own version and use that for your own project. And if you order the kit, you get the PCB and all the components, you solder it yourself, but you get three PCBs, not one, because this has a double function. You build one of these PCBs as your dev kit, develop your application, then you take another one, solder only the components you need onto there and use that as the PCB for your project that you build. So you can directly put the prototype in use and test it out in the real world without having to wait for a new board design or having to even make it your own. You can just use these boards that are provided with the kit and you have enough to develop and deploy your prototype. You can do a lot with this kit. The PWM outputs are also usable for heaters, so you could drive hot ends with them. You got four stepper driver plugins, so yes, you could make your very own 3D printer mainboard with this. I'm sure you have heard about the USB-C issues with the Raspberry Pi 4, so this board also addresses that by providing a convenient USB micro header on there. So if you have soldered that onto your board, you can just plug in a standard micro USB cable and power the Pi with that. And it also has a cutout for a 30 millimeter fan that you could use to cool your Raspberry Pi. We take advantage in this project of that. So you can power the fan with either 5 volts or whatever your motor voltage is. Always make sure that that is compatible. In this project, we stay at 5 volts for the logic and 12 volts for the motors and the fan. I'm Karen Corbeil, host of The Learning Circuit, a show where we learn about electronic components and concepts, then apply what we learn by building projects. Look for new episodes of The Learning Circuit on Wednesdays and connect with me on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning! This is the package you would get when you order one of these kits. It's pretty substantial, there are a lot of components in there. Let's assemble it, develop the code for our cheese grater with it, and then transfer that over to the spare PCB so we can use that as the main board for our cheese grater Mac Pro. Add-on boards for the Raspberry Pi usually plug in on top of the single board computer, and so does this one. But you can also assemble it in a different way. Just put a header on top and use a 40 pin cable to connect the Raspberry Pi and the dev kit, so you have it flat on your bench. You may want to do that that way. Uh, it feels easier for making some connections. It may be more convenient if you have to swap out your Raspberry Pi for other microcontrollers. So. Either way, you can assemble it the way you want. This is made for flexibility and to improve your workflow. You can use this in different ways. You can directly connect the screen and keyboard to the Raspberry Pi and use it standalone. Or you could SSH into the Pi and develop on there. Or you can install an IDE directly on the Pi that runs locally, like for example Cloud9, that is what I use, and use your computer to log into that so you have the convenience of your big computer at home or your laptop, but you're developing on real hardware in a dedicated IDE that lets you quickly try out different iterations of code, make small changes over and over again. It makes for a very convenient and fast workflow. That's the way I like to use it. And that's the way how I wrote most of the code you have seen on this channel. And now that we have the development environment set, let's draw up some designs in Fusion 360 to make the mechanical part of this cheese shredder. There are a lot of ways you can shred or grate cheese, but I think the easiest one is to use the power of meshing gears. So the cheese gets in between the gears and those push it together and it should break. So this would work for softer and harder cheeses and it's pretty easy and robust to construct. I've experimented with different sizes and gear ratios. 
I ended up using a ratio of 1 to 3, so the stepper motor can exert 3 times the force it would uh, only be able to provide with direct drive. The gears were 3D printed with PLA filament, 30% infill and cubic infill, so they are strong in every direction. When you are 3D printing gears, always make sure your printer is perfectly calibrated because a little deviation may cause your gears to bind up or not properly mesh or your bearings may not fit. So always do a test print, see if everything fits and then print the full gear. The housing is 3D printed in multiple parts and the front and back plate of the device is cut from laser cut acrylic. So you can see what's going on in there. I've also laser cut a plate to mount the Raspberry Pi onto and I'm also 3D printing a little bracket that would hold the HDMI outputs to the back of the case. The system has booted up. Of course I can't run Mac OS X on there, but I can run Raspbian Buster with a dock that's kind of Mac stylish and give it the appearance like macOS and the look and feel of it. We have the original keyboard, the original mouse, and it works over the front USB and even the power button works. So now let's shred some cheese. Our test cheese of choice is Austrian Emmentaler, which is a bit strange because the Emmentaler is in Switzerland, but yeah, it's cheese made in Austria. So let's shred that into pieces with our new Mac Pro. So actually shredding cheese with this device was pretty successful. It worked great with the Emmental cheese. I'm not sure if it would work with softer cheeses, maybe harder ones would work better, but we didn't want to make a universal cheese shredder. We want to make world's first Mac Pro that actually grates cheese. And it does that. I really like that you can just activate it by pushing the cheese in. You don't have to start a program or click somewhere to do the action. You just put cheese in and you instantly get grated cheese. And I actually used that cheese on my dinner. So two wins for me. Today we have turned a decade old joke about workstations that look like cheese graters into reality by building the first Mac Pro that actually grates cheese. I question my sanity a little bit for building that project, but it was a very fun ride. I got to use my own motion control dev kit which I'm pretty proud of and I think that it would be useful for a lot of projects in the future and also for your projects out there. You can order the kit at the link in the description. I would like your ideas for jokes that we could take and turn into real things. Do you have any ideas for other motion projects? Is there anything that you wish that your computer could do but it can't and you would think it would be crazy or cool to do that? Let us know in the Element 14 community. I gotta go, there's another project waiting for me.